to Studio to Studio with your local lay Dominicans. We'll be discussing some of the gems we discovered in our studium, where we share the fruits of our contemplation and the joy of the gospel message. Representing our St. Albert the Great, lay Dominican chapter, and co-host of today's show are myself, Cheryl Drozda, Jeff Drozda, Ryan Buller, Becky C. And today we're going to be discussing the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I think sometimes these are often mixed up with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. They're also mixed up with virtues that are attached to them. And um, so we're going to try to straighten all that out and give a little bit of our thoughts. Um, this was based on our current reading in the studium, which is Garigou Lagrange's Three Ages of the Interior Life. And he brings us up at the beginning to help us to know that we must have an understanding of these and we must try to um, invoke these so that we can move forward in the spiritual life. Yes, what he refers to as the, the spiritual organism. Uh, so, and that's just the, the different operations of our soul uh, and how it interacts with, with our body, how we interact with each other and with our Lord through the virtues, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, ultimately the, the Beatitudes. So what are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I think, Cheryl, you have a little a little song that you can sing for us <laughs> that you did for, um, for oh homeschooling. Boy. So if you could share it with us so all of our um, listeners can know what those <laughs> gifts are. Okay. Um, we sang it. You can do that. You can present these gifts in a lot of ways. Um, what, what Jeff is referring to is a little song he made up for the kids to remember. Wisdom, piety, fear of the Lord, understanding, counsel, knowledge, fortitude. That is not the order we're going to do them in today. We can also do them in the order that Isaiah 11.1 1 presents these gifts, which he calls spirits. Um, but we've come to know as gifts and through, um, you know, our, our understanding of what what God was saying in this passage. And a lot of times people get these mixed up with the virtues. I think Ryan was talking about he he loves the heroic virtues and and they're necessary um, to practice these virtues. Um, As a matter of fact, that's one of the ways that we we can prepare to use these gifts and be guided by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so, I mean, in my mind, the virtues were, you know, the highest mountain. And it's, it's something that you know, I would daily meditate on, you know, and try to practice these virtues. And then we read not even a whole chapter, reading like Article 5, I think, of one chapter in this book, Three Ages of the Interior Life. And it just completely flipped my my appreciation for the virtues in my mind. All of a sudden, the virtues, which seemed like the greatest mountain, all of a sudden seemed so small compared to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I'm not saying that represents the, the actual reality. I mean, they're both crucial i mean especially the virtue of charity is uh you know it's how we we gain union with the lord that's that's why we're here but it's to say that i mean when you look at the gifts of the holy spirit they are just they're on a on a more supernatural uh plane and it's a it's a sort of higher um we're able to to perform works uh, as god would do them and not to the best of us as human in our human mind and our human way of seeing things. Like if we do things our absolute best and compare that to God, any act of God, I mean, it's so minuscule. And so the same thing when we're working through the gifts, which are supernatural, which are God working through us, we're just a vessel. We're going to accomplish works that go far beyond what our imaginations can be. Um, and we see that in the lives of the saints. Uh, but, you know, when we, we have to start with, with what we have. And so most of us start with the virtues because those sort of clear the path for once we, we practice them and we start emptying ourselves out of our attachments, that clears the path for the gifts to come in. Uh, so it's difficult to, to make that, um, that path without practicing the virtues, though, one might argue that uh, St. Therese of Lisieux, fa- in her little way, found a shortcut. But she did that by, you know, exhibiting charity, which in love, which you're right, one of the ways that we are able to access the gifts, um, because they are not something that we can um, activate. Um, we are given those gifts. But for them, j- let's just give sort of the definition. Um, the gift is a stable disposition given to the soul that makes it ready to be moved by God. Um, 
the Holy Spirit is what moves, gives us these gifts. And um, whatever happens, action that occurs with these gifts is very clear because it's very confident and it's very divine. It's not something that like we hope that we're achieving by doing this virtue. It is, we, we know it because it comes from beyond us and achieves something that is beyond us. Um, so it's interesting that you brought up the mountain um, of climbing the virtues because uh, on the Mount of Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount, our Lord presented uh, the Beatitudes. And that's how, instead of using Isaiah's uh, numbering of the gifts or, or using our song, we're going to use the Beatitudes and the way they were presented in St. Matthew's Gospel, Chapter 5, um, because they're in sort of a hierarchy, a climbing of the Beatitudes to the top of the also the highest gift. So we'll begin with the first Beatitude, Blessed are the poor in spirit. This one is linked to the first gift we're going to discuss, which is fear of the Lord. Yeah, so St. Augustine was possibly the first person to make the connection between the Beatitudes and the gifts. I mean, at least he, he wrote, wrote out the, the connection for us, uh, for the tradition to pick up on and, and expand upon. You know, one of the ways in which um, another saint, St. Thomas Aquinas, sort of expanded upon that is, um, is by bringing in the virtues and defining the gifts uh, as also habits. So the virtues, you know, when I hear virtue, I immediately think habit. Um, and then with the, with the gifts, he also uses the, the same word uh, in Latin uh, for habit uh, in that it's a habit of our disposition. So when we think of these habits, both with the with the virtues and the gifts, it's sort of a, it's a way of being. That It's a habit that's so ingrained that you would identify it as part of someone's core identity because it's just, that's who they are. It's just, you don't have to think about it. The great story I love to reference of this is St. Saint Maximilian Kobe, uh, who, uh, who, you know, um, offered up his life for a fellow prisoner in, in Auschwitz, and that survivor had survivor's guilt so, um, but till, till one day it was revealed to him that this connection of this habit and this so is being so ingrained in the person. And he realized that, oh, St. Maximilian Kolbe, he was so ingrained with the gifts and the virtues that he, to him, it wasn't a decision. It wasn't a choice. It's just, it, you presented with this opportunity to save someone's life, you just automatically act out of it. And that gave him a lot of peace and consolation. Oh, that was a great example. So, um, so this would be a high degree of fear of the Lord, because there are different degrees of fear of the Lord. Um, and some people get confused on this, and I even think, so I've dealt with this with our teenagers who don't understand and don't actually like to hear fear of the Lord because it kind of makes them, like, I don't want to fear something. And that's sort of um, the misunderstanding, uh, um, because this type of fear is one who loves so deeply that they have a fear above all other fears, and it's the fear of separation from their beloved. And so it's not the type of fear that we would consider um, at a low level servile fear where we're, fear, we're afraid of, um, of going to hell for something we do. Um, and, that's, and it's an okay to, to begin there, by the way. Um, the beginning of, of wisdom is fear, and that's why we're starting out with this one, because um, we're heading up in the in on this mountain but um so a high degree uh of fear of the lord would be detaching from things um and this this that's why this is considered saint thomas considers this uh gift of of the holy spirit a perfection not only of temperance which is at the lower degree so it keeps us from doing something bad because we're afraid of something but he also considers it um a, a perfection of hope because when we get to that higher level that desire for heaven you know he's per, we're perfecting that gift that uh, virtue of hope what do you think becky so it or when you're talking about it, it's like sin separates us from god so when the holy spirit gives us the gift of the fear of the lord we want to be holy like our father and so it's not that we're fearing our Father because the gift of the fear of the Lord gives us the desire to avoid sin because we do not want to be separated from God. Exactly. 
I, I love the uh, just the the crossover between you know all the different ones. You know, we were discussing earlier, complete detachment uh, coming with with uh, you know with the get uh, with the attitude of peace being at peace, and you know sort of what I've learned from studying the virtues is that if you perfect one of the virtues you perfect all of them and then what you know Cheryl is portraying here if the fir- the very the first gift the very basic gift of fear of the lord if you perfect that well then you know not that we perfect it but um, nevertheless if you are exhibiting it to its highest degree, you're fully docile to the holy spirit and receiving the uh, maximum benefit of the gift uh, then you are going to receive all the gifts uh, as well they don't ever come just one isolated they always come uh, together, but they they manifest uh, in different ways. I think this one is more akin to wonder, because all good things we know come from God, and so when we begin to see these good things more clearly, we want to be with Him always. The fear of the Lord is about allowing ourselves to be loved by God, like little children. We have right. to be like children, right? To enter Correct. The There's Saint Therese again. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go on to the second beatitude. Blessed are those who mourn. Um, St. Thomas has attached us to the gift of knowledge. Um, And we're going to um, try to mine this a little bit, but knowledge gives us uh, an understanding of creatures in in the divine manner so that we may be able to lift ourselves from them to God. So we see God, God's creation, and then we see it reflect back on the creator. Yeah, so I, I think this gift of knowledge helps us to see sin because it's the most, uh, it's the gift most grounded in the created uh, world. So we're able to judge what is sin from what is, is not sin. Um, you know, whether it's the, the other gifts, you know, we're so, when we, we act upon them, we're sort of you know, already living kind of in the kingdom of heaven. But this, this gift is, is firmly, uh, you know, grounded towards uh, the created things and the, and the, the weeping of sin, as St. Thomas says. I think, I think St. Thomas says it perfects the virtue of hope. They, I mean, again, they all work together, uh, but this, this knowledge of, this gift of understanding, which we'll, we'll get to next, um, you know, I, I guess really reflects the, more of the infused uh, virtue of faith where we're able to, we're, we're able to you know, truly um, see ourselves you know, as God sees, sees us, whereas Hope is really about trying to, to get to heaven in the first place, and so um, so knowledge um, to try to to try to unpack what you know Saint Thomas is saying there. Um, knowledge gives us the 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 hope that God is is going to allow us to get to heaven if we're docile to His Spirit, which is, brings up you know another great point of Saint Thomas is that um, we cannot there is no salvation without the gifts. So even the virtues alone alone will perfect our, our reason and our, our natural reason, um, but we require something supernatural in order to reach the kingdom of heaven. We can move on to the third beatitude, blessed are the meek. Uh, this is linked to the gift of piety. Any thoughts on that? So just uh, you know, piety in, in general um, seems to be uh, very critiqued uh, in our modern culture. So something you know, I always fall back on when talking about discussing piety is too much of the focus is often given to the intention. Are you doing this pious act because you know you truly love the Lord, or are you just trying to show off how pious you are? And of course, the gift is 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 a tr- is a true surrender, uh, is a true um, act of love of the, love of the Lord, being being meek for Him. Um, but one. One thing I th- hopefully we could all agree on when looking at uh, piety is uh, let's just do the act. Let's just do the act first and figure out the intention later. Well, sometimes we think of it as um, when we are at in front of the Blessed Sacrament, we kneel, we close our eyes, so we're just doing things. But it actually emphasizes our reliance on God, on recognizing and appreciating God's many gifts, and that suggests humility. The idea that piety is, it actually looks to honoring God and reverencing God. It's like you can't love God too much. And sometimes, actually, this refers back to fear of the Lord. We want to do something 
we're moved to do something and we don't have the courage because we are afraid somebody will think we're being pious or something, so we don't. And that is a problem <laughs> because when we're moved to reverence God, we need to have fear of the Lord and we need to go through with that act of piety. So what about him. more compassion? Maybe it is tied into compassion, the piety. So it, I think it pushes us to have a compassionate heart when we deal with other people. Well, and that goes to the blessed are the meek, right? It is, right. There's a humility in there that where we recognize who we are and who God is and that what we owe God. And that's why this is hooked to the virtue of justice. You're listening to Christ Our King Catholic Radio, uh, Catholic Radio for Acadiana and 90.5 FM and 99.5 FM. We are your third order Dominicans or your lay Dominicans here based in Lafayette, Louisiana. I want to thank our sponsor, Stein Lumber. Uh, greatly appreciate their support for allowing us to, to bring you our fruits of contemplation uh, from our studio. That's why it is uh, studio to studio. And so we are talking about gifts of the Holy Spirit. And, um, you know, looking back in history, Pope Leo XIII uh, penned an encyclical called Dividium Illud Munis. Now, of course, that's Latin, but um, it talks about the Holy Spirit and it talks about you know, what, what we need to do to invoke the Holy Spirit. He gave us a um, nine-day novena prayer to the Holy Spirit so that we can invoke the Holy Spirit. But, um, you know, it, it's one thing that I recommend going and reading uh, this, encycl this encyclical. It's only about three pages long, uh, but it's very informative and very reflective. And keep in mind, Pope Lear was, was kind of busy during his pontificate. He also came up with the uh, Reverend Novarum, um, and really kind of established the Catholic social teaching for, uh, for the church. So, and he also said, just like um, uh, what uh, Ryan was saying, is that you know, these gifts are necessary for salvation. So if we're serious about salvation, then we really do need to invoke uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I guess that leads us to give to fortitude. Yeah, with, I think with all the gifts, I, I, analogy that's coming to me is sort of when you encounter uh, just a beautiful piece of art, some people will critique that art and say, you know, uh, I don't think that's actually that beautiful. But the fact that, you know, millions of people reference it and, you know, look upon it and, you know, maybe travel to, to see it, you know, maybe should speak other. Maybe we should have a disposition of humility in that, okay, if we can't appreciate it, maybe we're not the ones judging the art, but the art is the one judging us. And so similar to with these gifts, if we look upon them or see them in action with with someone and we think that's odd or that's strange or um, we're not drawn towards it well maybe that is judging us and we're not the ones actually judging uh, these actions good point jeff said we we'll go on to the gift of fortitude we go into the fourth beatitude which is blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness so the uh, there is a virtue of fortitude which fortitude perfects so this is a tough one. It's one of those things, actually a lot of these have sort of a human virtue versus this supernatural gift. This one is a great example of, and we, we kind of understand what fortitude is, some sort of courage to help us to get through something. And we can, we can draw that, drum that up in ourselves and everything, but what we're talking about here is something that's beyond us, like Philippians 4.13, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. It's not us. It's God doing this. So this this uh, gift is seems self-explanatory, but it's much higher than uh, just its simple virtue. I think fortitude supports us in living out the other six gifts because it makes our way faithfully through our earthly life to our eternity with God. Uh, they say when you, you have a crisis, like you said, when something big happens, when you have a crisis and you're faced with decisions on what to do, the Holy Spirit actually gave us this gift as a light for our path, a light for our dark, dark path and for us to help to decide what to do. It reminds me of um, you know, this common recognition that the most common phrase in the Bible is, what is it, fear not, or something like that, uh, reverencing fortitude. And then we have again, when we study the, the virtues and the gifts, the only one that's repeated twice is fortitude. So I think there's a, there's a message there in that it's, a, it's so important um, you know, to to uh, to break free from the shackles of, of sin and, and worldliness that we need it and we need it not just 
perfected in our reason uh, and then through our you know own grit and willpower, but we also need we need uh, supernatural help as well and something we see in the martyrs. Um, you know, they not only were uh, rumbled, rumbled up the, the courage to, to not deny their faith, but they also, you know, rejoiced in the opportunity to, be, to give up their life or to endure the suffering like Christ did. And so that's not something we can ever do ourselves. It's only something that's going to be a supernatural gift. Which is why St. Thomas said, I, I, when I, I was thinking this, when Becky was talking too, um, St. Thomas said we can't uh, achieve sanctification without these gifts because at some point in our life we're going to go through a time that's beyond us. It's just the way it is, and it's the way it's set up so that we need to depend on God. We, we need total surrender, which is something that piety helps us with, and then um, because these all lean on each other, and that gives us the, the grace and to ask for uh, these gifts, and God will send them when we surrender to him. He will send us what we need, which is fortitude, right? Um, to get through and to use these gifts wisely. Um, the next beatitude would be, blessed are the merciful. Attached to this is the gift of counsel, and it is said that this perfects the virtue of prudence. I actually love this example that was given in the sanctifier. Prudence um, is ruled by reason, so that's the human virtue, but the supernatural virtue is mercy, and that's one thing that is in no way do we have any form of mercy as a, as a virtue, right? Like even in the Greeks, whatever it is, they have no concept of mercy. This is a divine uh, virtue only. It's not something like fortitude that we can muster up. We can't, we, we wouldn't even consider mercy if it wasn't for God. The, um, the example that they give in, in the book Sanctifier is of St. Catherine. Yay, one of our <laughs> saints. And she was a Dominican and she actually existed on Holy Communion during entire seasons like Lent. Um, and that's a council. That's something that was moved and is achieved because it was led by God. Um, she saw an exalted rule of the will of God. Prudence would tell us we need so much food to survive. We need X amount of food. We need to do this. But um, counsel is this higher thing, and it comes from God, and, and she knew it was from God. So it was something that was a benefit to her. Yeah, it's interesting you bring up the, um, you know, the the Romans or the Greeks and having no concept of of mercy, um, which I think I think is sometimes defined as a sub virtue of of charity, which they didn't have any of the the theological virtues. Their highest virtue was prudence, which is where we're at now with with counsel. So it's ironic in a way. We're talking about mercy on the the highest virtue. Of, uh, of the Greeks. Um, but this, in, in the Three Ages of the Interior Life, when he talks about the gift of counsel, this settled uh, a years of debate for me because this um, sort of uh, conversation of is it ever okay to lie um, is something that has always really struck, with, struck me because, um, you know, especially as a Dominican and, and having, a, a, um, having such a strong love for the truth, which is God, um, you know, I believe it's, it's never okay to lie, but a lot of, you know, holy people, theologians that I, I respect well will say, you know, in certain circumstances, it depends on the circumstance, it might be okay to lie. And they always, uh, one of their favorite ones to argue is, is um, you know, like when the Nazis were searching for Jews and people were, Christians were hiding them, and they say, okay, well, it's okay to lie here. Um, you know, because you're you're protecting uh, these Jews, or you're serving a higher purpose. But um, you know, Father Gregory Pine, who I get a lot of this material from, he you know he argues, uh, he's a Dominican friar who argues, no, even in that circumstances, it's never okay to lie. But it's difficult to sort of wrap your head around this. Well, in our book, Three Ages of the Interior Life, he brings up that example and just so effortlessly says. It's obviously the gift of counsel that allows you to, to communicate with the Nazis in a way that both does not endanger the Jews and does not force you to lie. So um, it's, it's not accepting that you have to choose between lesser of two evils. It's saying that you know, there's always a good path. There's always a third path. No matter how difficult, uh, whatever difficult life situations come, there's always... Uh, a third path that affirms all goodness, all truth, all beauty, uh, and we need the Holy Spirit. We can't come up with it ourselves.
And that's total trust in Jesus, right? Like, I'm going to trust that if I'm, if I'm doing what is virtuous here, that you're going to make this work out for the best. And I think that's, that's what, where that meets, you know, the rubber meets the road on that. Um, the next beatitude is in the sixth is blessed are the pure of heart um, and for they shall see God which I wanted to finish that one because I think it it leads right into the gift of understanding we've talked about this before on studium to studio Ryan about purity recently we've talked about it um, in the angelic warfare and um, the fact that purity of heart is what allows us to have that light of, of God to understand and penetrate spiritual things. All right, so you heard from me. What about Becky? What are your thoughts on the attitude? On understanding? Understanding, yes. Well, um, hmm. it enables us to understand things as God understands them, I think. Mm -hmm. It opens up our minds. It leads us from merely knowing what God has revealed to living like he wants us to be. Very good. Yes, and I have that this gift is connected to the virtue of hope. There's a lot about the gift of understanding that I love as far as um, when you go into Adoration Chapel and you have nothing planned and you're just reading, all of a sudden these things come to you that you know you wouldn't understand yourself, but God is giving you some assistance there. And I, I think that this is one I can relate to more than a lot of the other gifts myself. And this increases our faith. And we'll, we, we don't have a lot of time, so we're going to move into our seventh uh, beatitude, blessed are the peacemakers, and that's hooked to the gift of wisdom. This is the highest gift. It perfects charity, and God is love. So how anybody want to jump in on this one? <laughs> well, the Catechism says that wisdom is one of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, but it completes and perfects the virtues of all those who receive them. Yeah, so when we're living in wisdom, we're already living uh, as we will in the, in the similar to the beatific vision uh, in heaven, we're just so we're so united with God uh, through this gift that it it shows in just a, is this complete and total peace. Uh, and it reminds me of a, a point Charles shared uh, in one of our chapter meetings, uh, in which his spiritual director advised him to said pray for peace. And he said why? And he said because peace encompasses all the other uh, desires that we have. So if you're given peace, you're also going to be given joy. You're also going to be uh, given you know all the other gifts of the Holy Spirit and all the the other consolations, uh, I should say, and so all the sat satisfaction of, um, you know, righteousness and everything else with the Beatitudes, that the Beatitudes uh, promise, I should say. So I thought that was interesting that um, he, he was told to just pray for, for peace and the rest will take care of itself. And then we see here the, the fullness of the, the reason why is because, you know, this is the top of the hierarchy for the Beatitudes as well as the gifts and the virtues uh, in charity. And, that, and it produces that peace that passes all understanding. Um, it also directs all of the other um, gifts. It is the height and what directs and orchestrates this beautiful symphony that God has given us in this. So I think, I think we should recognize here as we're coming to the end, um, start to think about how we're going to live in the kingdom of heaven, especially with this gift of wisdom. You know, what the merits we, we and, the, and the level of virtue we attain here especially in charity and prudence, are the only things we're going to take with us when we go to heaven. So the time is tact is now. We can't wait till, you know, we're, we're in purgatory and we can't really earn anything in purgatory to, that would get us, uh, um, you know, a more, uh, a better view of the beatific vision, uh, to, to use a sort of analogy. The wisdom and charity is what we should uh, learn to cultivate now in this life and not, not put it off. And I think also all of these gifts will help us to be Christ for all. And this is what I hopefully live daily, um, is trying to be Christ for all to anyone that I meet. Very good. Thank you for listening. And remember to stand firm in the absolute truth, Jesus Christ, because only the truth bears grace. Lived through time, passed through fire, broke my heart, wounded desire. Changed my life, fixed the past, I stared at death and it stared back. Standing fast in the light of the word, a shotgun blast was the last thing I heard. I rattled in the wind like a window pane, my soul's alright but my body...